Imagine living in a quiet suburban street for 40 years, only to find out your new next door neighbour will be a block of 12 townhouses. It's change that's hard to accept, even when that sort of development helps with housing affordability and can relieve the need for suburban sprawl. With the planning push towards more city living, confrontations between existing communities and developers are becoming increasingly common. Finding the balance is the holy grail of planning policy. But can it be achieved in a city where people are fiercely proud of their streets and suburbs? There's a value of living in a small street, and that is the community that it creates. It's not something you can buy and sell. It's not something you can measure or order up on eBay, but it evolves over time. We have so many sentimental value for this uh, neighbourhood and for this street. We are not prepared to move out of this uh, street. I was in the biggest army the world has ever seen. We were miles... We, uh would have been here in the 44, 45 years for sure. And all our children have grown up together, those ones that have lived here that long. Uh, and not only that, the grandchildren are now here. We were marching as one on the road to the Holy Grail. It's a quiet street, it's a loop street, so we were really happy to live here, but now things are changing and we're not so happy anymore. In many older Canberra suburbs, those streets mean bikes and ball games, parents, prams and the odd dancing dog. Just a few reasons why the residents love living there so much and why any perceived threat is opposed so strongly. Well, it is our backyard and it's our backyard's important to us and it's worth fighting for. I think it's unfortunate that our safety could be at risk. I've lived here 20 years. I mean, others have been here 40 years. Um, and, you know, like even the streetscape, they didn't even take any notice of that. I don't think anybody's got a problem with redevelopment. What we do have is a problem with is extreme redevelopment. Well, everybody in this small area anyway, their lives are going to be changed, that's for sure. I'm just wondering how people who are making these decisions would react if it was their neighbourhood. How would, how would the minister react? It would be easy for me to, to say, oh look, I can protect you from all change. Um, no government can do that. Uh, the world is changing, our society is changing, uh, the demographics of our city are changing. So it is inevitable that there will be change right down to an individual street level. Sleepy suburbs are proving a battleground for communities and developers over plans to knock down houses and build multi-unit complexes. There are more than 30 of these developments up for comment on the ACPLA website and dozens more in progress. It's just a question of uh, sustainable development. Unfortunately, that there is a price to be paid and that's usually the people who've actually lived in the street. Fred Kasparek is an architect involved in multi-unit developments. There's no question that the major uh, driver for developers is actually the dollar and uh, I say that that's a healthy thing in many ways but most developers you'd be surprised don't make as much money as people believe them to. Certainly uh, developers do push the, the boundaries, there's, there's no doubt of that, that's why we have a planning system, uh, that's why we have in place all of uh, the rules and requirements that, uh, that a robust planning system has. Uh, there's no, again, no perfect answer to this. Uh, if you uh, go too far the other way, then there will be very little development. Uh, housing prices will rise considerably uh, and we won't be able to respond to the challenges of climate change and affordability. I've been doing this probably for close to 15 years in Braddon, Turner, or pretty much most suburbs, older suburbs. Uh, initially, you certainly have a very aggressive uh, residents because they don't want things to change, you know, and I can understand that. That change is significant for these community groups. So they're proposing to knock down these two single houses, join them together and then build seven townhouses. So it's kind of bizarre maths really. At the moment, 
you know, they only allowed to have one each, but you join the blocks together and you can get seven. At the end of uh, 2008, most of us woke up one morning with a picture on the front page of the Canberra Times that, with a proposal to sell six adjoining blocks here and put up anything in the order of up to about 40 townhouses on that space. To knock these two really nice houses down, which is a waste, and build seven in there is a little over the top, in my opinion. They are proposing to knock down two houses behind us on the inside elbow of this rather sharp curve and put in 12 townhouses or 12 units. It just feels to me that there's greed driving it. Maybe that's harsh, but I'm wondering. I put that as a question. People often say, well, we want a development that uh, complements the existing houses and so on, and, but sadly, you can't do that. Many of the houses are at, their, um, at the end of their life. You know, they're 40, 50 years old. They're not insulated they're actually run down many of them but clearly there are still areas where uh, where developers are pushing right to the uh, to the extremes of what's allowed and there's community concern about that the common concerns include traffic and noise issues waste disposal and shading the territory plan of 2008 determines what's allowed in a given area it remains under review these people live in Residential Zone 2, or RZ2. It allows for dual occupancies and medium density multi-unit developments. Putting seven townhouses on there, from two single houses to seven, is a very high density. Is that what they want with RZ2? Or is RZ2 a lower density? And I think they really need to sort that out. If they sort that out, it wouldn't be left up to, you know, to people mm. without any money in streets to fight these battles individually. The ACT plan itself as a document sounds really good. It talks about the need for urban infill, it talks about the need for higher density. In practice what you get is not something that is in keeping with the neighbourhood. It is higher density than what it implies will happen and it's basically just a tick and flick for developers. We understand the need for urban infill. A lot of us catch the bus and I'd, you know, I'd love to have more regular bus services and, and that only happens when you've got a certain level of density. But, you know, I think you've, you've got to be realistic about um, what works. I wouldn't be interested in this um, objection if it were simply a NIMBY um, process. Um, it's the sheer scale of the proposed development. Some of these battles have been won or lost, others are still to be decided. But it's a costly and time-consuming process for a community to challenge a development through ACPLA and the appeals process. I think it is weighted in favour of the developers against the local community. The uh, developers often uh, take advantage of that because people just don't have the knowledge or the resources or the time and so on to uh, put up the fight. Greg Rutledge put his money where his mouth is with his own fight and won. There's no voice uh, for the local residents in my view. It's a, it's a shame there's not something or someone that's there to represent better the interests of the local community that's affected by these developments. Some sort of community advocate or something like that? Well that's exactly what I think uh, is needed. I mean I don't know that that's practical or whatever but in concept I think that is what's lacking. So you've got your developer who's worrying about profits and you've got the planners who are worried about their plans <laughs> but the question is who's worrying about the people who live here? We are. This debate may be bigger than those backyard worries. The government and design experts tell us Canberra is at a planning crossroads. The planning authority is seeking to create opportunities for the city to evolve. It's seeking to create those opportunities because of the pressures of climate change, because of the pressures of changing population, because of the, the issues around the long-term sustainability of the city. We can't go on like we have in the previous 60 years where the, the suburbs have kept on expanding out further and further out and people are expecting their quarter acre block. That's a, that's a concept that's way past its due by date. You know, it's just people don't do that anymore and shouldn't do. The city forms that in Australia are showing the best sustainable outcomes are the city forms where you have a reasonable density of population around your commercial, your major commercial centres. So urban renewal is coming, change is coming to the suburbs? Th that is inevitable. The question is what's the scale of that change? Well, my personal view is it's good to have infill but it needs to be planned, managed and done with a way that doesn't affect the residential amenity. Gina Pincus has seen both sides of this debate. She was an advisor to former Planning Minister Simon Corbell and is now an advocate for Woden Valley Community Council. 
I think it's a very big problem. I just counted this morning. There are applications on ACPLA's website for 31 um, townhouses now in Chifley alone. It's spread right across suburbs everywhere and I would urge people to actually have a look at the ACPLA website. The Woden Valley Community Council has proposed a compromise called Neighbourhood Plans. They provide a planning overlay where communities could have input as to where multi-unit developments would be most appropriate. Clearly from practical experience now uh, over the last couple of years since the planning system changed, a need to, to tweak uh, some of the, the rules to make it uh, fairer for, uh, for the community, particularly in terms of uh, their input in particularly residential uh, zone two. People need to take action now because when they wait for it to happen next to them, it'll be too late and we need to actually change the policies before then. ACPLA is reviewing the zoning rules. The level of feedback from the community may determine if these developments continue or are limited to major roads, shops and public transport corridors. I'd like to see the, the RZ2 zone focus more on dual and triple occupancies and a bit less on, uh, on the large multi-unit uh, style developments. We've taken some steps to limit the number of units uh, or townhouses or houses that can be built uh, on particular blocks depending on their size. But we can look again at uh, whether some further controls in that area might alleviate community concerns. But of course, that's the density dilemma. If you ease infill in suburbs zoned RZ2, greater density will be pushed to other areas, either greenfield sites or someone else's backyard. For many parents,